For almost three months now, I have owned these Chevy Volt batteries in my DIY Powerwall. I've been using them and I've had no way to charge them. Well, today's the day we're going to change that. This is a solar charge controller made by Victron. It's their 250 slash 100 model, which means it can take up to 250 volts from the solar panels and 100 amps to the batteries. I picked up a big one so that I could handle all 12 panels that I'm going to be mounting on the solar array. Why this charge controller? Well, I'll share with you why I picked it up from my application, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily right for you. So make sure you do your own research on them. All right, number one reason. So not all charge controllers would allow me to hook up the entire array to one. This charge controller is large enough to handle it. Number two, I picked it up because it is right out of the box from the factory. It comes with an algorithm for lithium batteries. Number three, it has the largest operating range for vo charging voltage of any charge controller I was able to find which means that even with a 12 cell configuration where I might want to set these down at 49 volts, this can handle it. Or if you were to change this and use it in the 16 cell configuration, you could also set it with this. The same charge controller just has this huge range. Number four, this is controlled with a app on my phone. Very simple, intuitive user interface. I've already been playing around in the demo mode of that app, I found it very easy to work with. Number five, this is a very efficient charge controller and I think it's passively cooled with the fins on the back instead of requiring a fan to cool it. I personally like that because it means less moving parts, less things to fail over time. And finally, the number six reason that I picked up this charge controller instead of others, fantastic reviews out there. People really seem to love this thing and I hope I'm going to join them. I picked up this charge controller from Alt E Store. Uh, they're actually just a few towns over from me and they're really great to work with, really knowledgeable staff. They don't advertise this particular model on their website, but they are a Victron dealer and they can get it for you. And I found that they were able to beat the prices of other places online that I was looking at. While I picked it up from them, I also picked up some circuit breakers and I picked up a uh, cable here with the MC4 connectors so that I can uh, plug this into the solar panels. Now given that this can take 250 volts from the solar panels, I, could, I can hook up four solar panels in series with each other. However, I don't have thick gauge wire to go to the battery from this right now. So I'm just going to hook up two solar panels in series. That gets me up over the voltage so that I'm in the MPPT range, but keeps me at a low enough amperage so that I can use some wire that I just have on hand. I'm taking my PV wire with the MC4 connectors and I'm going to find the middle. Now you don't always cut it in the middle, uh, but in my case I am, but it depends on your situation. All right, this is the positive wire coming off from the solar panel and I'm going to connect it up to this one. Now that's slightly confusing because there's a printed negative symbol on this but that's because I'm connecting the negative to positive. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect these up. That's the positive. Now to remind myself of that, I'm now gonna follow this wire down. And I'm gonna put some 
red tape on this end so that I remember this is positive. Okay, we have our main positive and negative from the solar panels. I'm on the opposite side of the circuit breaker right now. We have zero. Now I'm going to move it to the battery side of the circuit breaker. We have 42.6. So that's what we're starting out at. Yeah. So there's no voltage from the solar panels because I have them covered with the tarp. So first thing to do is turn on the battery connection. So that's this big circuit breaker. And I see that is now flashing, saying that we have the battery connection. Okay, I'm turning on the Victron app. All right, I'm gonna read the manual to see how to connect these two up. I couldn't seem to get this to work with my phone, which is an Android. So I'm using my wife's phone, which is an Apple. And we can see 626 watts coming in from the solar. So coming in from the solar is nine amps. Going out to the battery is 44 volts and 13.9 amps. Now what I did is I hit the setting button and I changed it uh, down here from the rotary switch, which is where it was, to user defined. And in the user defined, I set the absorption voltage to 48 volts and the float voltage to 48 volts. So I still have to figure out why this would not connect to my phone, which is an Android. This is my phone and it looks like updating the firmware on the charge controller did the trick. My phone is now connected and it's working. 600 watts voltage. Let's check the settings and make sure the settings are the same. And it says here user defined 48 volts. Uh, that would be 4.0 volts per cell because these uh, Chevy Volt batteries are in 12S right now. Excellent. Well, we solved that issue. That took about an hour to figure out why I couldn't sync that up. <laughs> but it's working. Awesome. The past four days, I've had this Victron charge controller connected to two solar panels in the backyard. And I gotta say, this thing has been working great. I've really liked it. And I especially like the app, even though it was a bit of a pain to get the app to connect in the first place. The newer firmware can connect to my Android. That's a bit of a pain. I wish Victron just sent it from the factory with the ability to connect uh, to Android. But now that it's working, I'm glad it is, and it's working really well. The app shows me that uh, the charge controller has put 12 kilowatt hours of electricity into those batteries, which is fantastic for the batteries, right? I mean, we were at, I think it was 42.7 volts, and now we're up at 48 volts. Now, those batteries can actually be fully charged up to 50.4 volts, and we weren't 100% depleted either. So there's a, a big range, and we've, we've put 12 kilowatt hours into it, and we could even put more. This guy is quiet, it connects very quickly, it does the MPPT. Yeah, so far, I'm very happy with this. I don't have a BMS yet. I'm not against BMSs, I'm not suggesting that anybody run batteries without BMSs. Guys, uh, I just haven't picked the right ones yet. I actually need eight BMSs for this setup. In order to check on the safety level, now that we have gone through a depletion and then a recharge cycle, uh, let's check what each cell is doing and see if they're still in balance with each other. So at the bus bar, we are at 47.9 volts. And the first one is reading 3.99. Second one, 3.99. So I'm taking my long piece of wire and I can reach in and check the back cell. And we're at 3.99. And then I can move this over, 3.99. Okay, this will get boring, so I'm gonna speed up the video. If I have one that's weird, I'll uh, stop and let you guys know. Well, that's all 96 cells. Every cell was 3.99 or 3.98, so we're good. Shortly, I should be starting the base of the solar ground mount, 
So watch for some future videos on that. And if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks a lot for watching. Can the air compressor run off the 3000 watt reliable inverter now that the batteries are at 48 volts? I have the valve open, no pressure in the tank, so let's give it a go now. No. It didn't do it. Ah, and it felt so close.